Hello everyone, it's Paul from This Design That. Today I want to talk about uh, studying for design. This is going to be a new series and this is just going to kind of cover a few things that I would have liked to have known myself before I started and while I was doing design. So um, a little bit about me, I have just finished three years of study for a, uh, a BA in graphic design. I studied at UAL in London, the uh, LCC campus. Um, I really, really enjoyed my, my degree. I think the, the uni itself, the teachers or the technicians, they're really, really good. I'd highly recommend LCC as a, as a place to study if, you, if you're looking to study graphic design or any sort of design related uh, courses. So this is gonna be the first video in the series and this video concentrates on those who are about to go to university. So this is really what I think you should be doing to prepare for university to get the most out of it. I often see a lot of questions posted up on student forums and stuff like that. And I remember when I was starting, uh, I did have kind of these preconceptions of what it was gonna be like. Uh, and I think it's quite different to what a lot of people think it's going to be like, especially if you're coming straight from from college, um, where it's a lot more, where it's a lot less kind of self-initiated. And I think that kind of transition to college, where you're kind of getting handheld to do things, to university. Um, some people warm to it, some people don't. So I've got kind of a list of stuff that I want to go through. And let's start off with number one. So the first thing, I think all students who are preparing to go to um, study design is they should learn the basics of the Adobe suite. That pretty much entails, I would say, InDesign, Photoshop, Illustrator, Premiere Pro, After Effects, Lightroom as well. Other things as well, if you want to get into kind of like UX design, uh, Adobe have brought out a few new tools for that. Sound, they've got Audition. Me personally, I am 30 years old, I almost forgot. I've been doing design well long before I started university. So thankfully for me, I had quite a few years of actually using these tools. Um, I would consider myself kind of in, intermediate to expert in, in a lot of these tools. So I kind of had, you know, a head start compared to a lot of people. The reason why I say that you should learn the Adobe Suite before you come to university is because right off the bat, your first project is going to be, you're going to be needing these tools. You're going to need to know really how to use them. So I remember in year one, our first project was to create a, a little zine, a little magazine. So straight away, you know, you, we needed to think about kind of photography, editing photos, uh, InDesign, laying out the magazine, how we're going to print it and stuff like that. So. You know, all these things, if someone had just learnt the basics of InDesign, maybe if they'd just done a little tutorial and learnt how to make a, you know, an eight page booklet or something like that in the summer, you know, that they would have had a head start. Don't expect teachers to teach you the Adobe Suite. This is, this is kind of the, the biggest complaint I always heard from other students is that they, they whinged about the teachers not teaching them how to use it or that the teachers expected them to know what to do with InDesign and you know they're asking themselves how on earth am I going to create a booklet I, I don't even know how to use InDesign it, it ain't down to the teachers to to teach you the Adobe Suite so don't think that you're going to be sitting in classes uh, just literally going through a textbook or a tutorial how to use InDesign some design schools might work like that and I think that the ones who do work like that are going to not you're not going to get as much from them as something like where I studied you know LCC where the lessons were really about design thinking and kind of helping you come up with ideas idea generation how to how to research topics how to better understand the topic so then you can be more informed in your design design decisions so those kind of things are what I think you should be taught because that being taught that by a professional designer um, is a lot more valuable compared to someone just telling you how to open a document in InDesign, how to add a text box. You can go on YouTube and, and you can learn that in five minutes. It's just a waste of time. You, you paying all this money to be at design school just to be taught something that you could be taught freely on YouTube. It's really, really important that, that you, you, know, you don't get annoyed at the fact that the teachers are not teaching you how to use all these Adobe tools. So yeah, that's number one, you know, le learn the Adobe suite and don't expect teachers to, to teach you it. It's really not hard to learn the basics of the Adobe suite. You've got the internet nowadays, it's just a wealth of knowledge. You know, you've got an almost unlimited amount of tutorials on YouTube for free 
and they will pretty much teach you how to solve any problem that you're going to come across on any of these Adobe programs. I am completely self-taught and I learned it all through pretty much YouTube, Toots Plus or Lynda.com. A um, good thing about well, where I studied at UAL, we got a free subscription to Lynda, so I could just, you know, I could log into Lynda and I could follow a tutorial if I wanted to. So another reason why I think that you should be learning the Adobe Suite before you start university is that it's going to free up your time to actually be creative and really think about how to solve these design problems when you're working on these projects. You know, you've got six to eight weeks to work on a project. You don't really want to be wasting half of that time trying to learn how to add a text box or how to add a drop shadow or whatever. Um, if you know the basics, it will really, really kind of put you a step ahead of a lot of people who are just wasting days and weeks trying to learn the Adobe Suite. And you can really just concentrate on being experimental, being creative, and really trying to find out what you like to do. So number two, is it's pretty obvious but it is to work hard if you're going to university just to party that's fine but don't expect to get too much from the course and honestly you can tell the ones who are taking the degree seriously and the ones that aren't now when i was 18 i would have been completely the same and that is why i didn't go to university when i was 18 because I probably would have just flunked it and not even bothered going to lessons. I personally think people should wait a little, a, f a few years before they go to university. I think you should work, get some real life experience, become a bit more mature and really figure out what you want to do. I think you'll get a lot more from your degree. But, but yeah, anyone who thinks uh, that doing a design degree is going to be easy or it's the easy choice, you know, typically media studies and stuff like that in college was, was considered kind of like the easy subject. If you if you want to succeed in design, if you, if you want to be good at it, it is a lot of hard work and it's just as much uh, hard work as it is for you know doing kind of the more traditional subjects languages uh, science mathematics engineering whatever uh, you know you're, you're going to be putting in a, a solid 40 to 50 hours per week uh, to, to get the most from this being creative is is really really hard it might come natural to some but design is really about kind of being creative but also solving problems for a client. So it's not just kind of like art where you can do what you want, you've really got to try and think about it and try and see what is kind of the best solution for these problems. So yeah, typically with, with uh, design degrees, you know, you don't have exams to revise for, you won't be taking exams. And you might think that that means that you can do less work. Well, believe me, that's not the case. You really want to be putting in, you know, as I said, 40 to 50 hours per week. That is what the, typically the, the university, they'll give you guidelines of how many hours you should, you should be spending per, per week working on the projects. And I found that to be pretty accurate, you know, you really need to have that time to put into it. And that moves on to the next point, which is again, you know, you need to make sure you've got 30 to 40 hours minimum per week to work on your projects. This this is a tough one because I understand that, first of all, studying for a degree is incredibly expensive. And two, that a lot of people are not living at home. You know, they're, they're kind of moving abroad or they're moving to a different part of the country. You've got rent to pay. You've got to pay for your own food. You've got to kind of do everything yourself. I, I was lucky in that I can work at home, I can work online, I can do freelancing, I can earn money. So, you know, I kind of helped pay for my for my university through doing that. It's going to be a lot tougher if you've got to kind of waste an hour or two hours every single day commuting to a job or doing something that isn't really going to help you. And, you know, you can quite easily spot the student that is spending five to ten hours per week compared to the ones that are spending 30 to 40 hours per week. You know, after a weekend you've got an assignment you've got to bring in some examples of what you've done you know you've got people bringing in like a an a4 scrap bit of paper and you've got people bringing in kind of like a folder of ideas it's, it's pretty obvious who is going to you know get the most out of this degree so this this is this is a tough one i feel sorry for a lot of students who are you know strapped for cash um and you know they've got to work but you really need to try and find that balance between Am I at university to just simply live away from my house and just have a bit of freedom? Or am I there to actually learn? You know, it's okay to, to get into debt 
for the time being if I'm gonna be investing in myself and I'm gonna be getting something from it. Yeah, this is really the only time in your life that you're gonna have you know, a good three to four years dedicated to just kind of self-improvement. You, you, you really won't find that many other times in your life unless you take a break and it's even harder to do it later in your life when you've got even more responsibilities. So my third point is to invest in a good laptop or a good desktop PC. I see a lot of students using the Apple laptops. In my opinion, they are a ripoff. They cost thousands. So for what you get, I don't really think that they're that good value for money. It just kind of seems to be the, uh, the trend for a designer to have kind of a you know an apple laptop or whatever i would really really recommend you know doing some research and trying to find you know either either building a desktop pc that you can that will make sure that you can do you know good editing especially if you want to get into animation 3d modeling and stuff like that but, but you know the, the reason why i say try to invest is because it will dramatically increase your workflow i know people that were using illustrator and photoshop and they were waiting five minutes to apply effects or to wait for things to render you know very simple things that on my pc that i built myself would have taken you know 10 seconds you, you'll be surprised how much time it really does save you know building a pc or something like that it isn't that expensive considering that you get a decent substantial loan at the beginning of each year i'm not sure what it's like for you know whatever country you're in in, in the uk i was getting eight to, to nine thousand pounds per year as, as a loan you know i built my pc for i think it was about 800 pound and it is future proof for the next probably seven to ten years you know i it can handle pretty much anything that i chuck at it and you know i was i was I was using InDesign, I had Photoshop open, I had Illustrator, I was maybe rendering something as well. It really does make a difference. So so that point is, is especially important for those who want to get into 3D animation, After Effects, video editing, especially when you start getting into kind of high resolution stuff, 4K. Uh, you will, you know, your, your old laptop, your old PC will just come to a standstill if you're, if you're trying to do this stuff. And it really does kind of affect your creativity because you're really limited by this very basic uh, machine that can't really do much. Number four things I think you should do to prepare for university is get used to public speaking. This is pretty much my biggest fear. I've got a huge problem with it. I never was able to conquer it in university, but I do appreciate that even though all of those hard times that I went through at university, um, getting incredibly nervous about uh, having to kind of present my work, I unfortunately know that it's gonna, you know, it's the reality of working in design. You really need to kind of be used to speaking about your work to other people and you will see an improvement. Uh, I will still be petrified of doing it and a lot of times I will shy away from doing it, but I know that kind of the, the times that I did push myself to do it at university, it did help the next time. You know, if, if you do suffer from social anxiety um, or anything else, I'll be honest, it's gonna to be tough for you. It was, in, it was incredibly tough for me and it was pretty much the thing that ruined university for me was just this constant fear of like, am I going to have to kind of present my work in class this you know today so yeah get get yourself mentally prepared for that and um, you know try and do anything you know if you want to do kind of like speaking you know public speaking classes they can help a lot therapy or, or whatever it is that kind of helps you to to kind of get better at this I would highly recommend doing that so okay so we looked at a few things that I think that you should do to prepare for uni this doesn't really concentrate on kind of the life outside of uni so for instance finding an apartment making friends, uh, how to spend your money and stuff like that. There's lots of videos uh, on YouTube that you can find to help you with that. If you do have any any questions of any stuff like that, then feel free to put it in the comment section. I'll be happy to answer and help you out. But let's just recap through what we've gone through. So number one is to learn the basics of the Adobe Suite. Make sure you know at least Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, and I'd probably say Premiere Pro because video is getting more and more important in uh, design courses. Number two is be prepared to work hard. It kind of goes without saying, but yeah, you know, get your head right. Make sure that you are kind of dedicated to doing this because it's a lot of money and it's three years. 
It's a lot of time to be to be wasting doing nothing. Uh, number three is to make sure that you have your your life planned out so that then you know that you can dedicate 30 to 40 hours per week to work on your projects. So that might be a case of maybe working during the summer and saving up all the money that you can to make sure that you can then kind of you know take down your hours that you're working per week to uh, you know help concentrate on your projects or it could also mean starting to try and think of ways that you can earn money online or passively yeah there's there's a lot of things out there that you can do to, to earn money online and it's really about just kind of cutting down the time that you're wasting doing stuff that isn't really going to kind of add any sort of value to your degree and your self-development. Number four is to use a bit of the money that you're going to get in a loan. Don't waste it on drugs and drink. Try to invest some in a good PC or a laptop. It will really help with increasing your creative abilities using these bits of uh, software. And it will also just dramatically speed up your workflow, which saves time. And, and time is really crucial with, with studying uh, university. Okay, that is it. So that's what I think you should do to prepare before you go to university. This is going to be a series, so we're going to be talking about what to do once you're in university and some other tips that I have kind of discovered along the way. Um, if you've got any other things that you think uh, should be done to prepare for university before you start, then put them in the comments section. If you've got any questions, if you're about to start university, then feel free to ask. I'll be happy to help. But that is it for now. I'll end it there.